Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this star-shaped ring animation. Why don't we start by making a ring? I'm going to use an ellipse function to draw a circle. An ellipse function takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle, and then the third and the fourth are the diameter or the width and the height of the circle. And I want to draw this circle in the center of my canvas, but I want to provide the x and y coordinate as 0, 0, or the origin. To do that, I need to use a translate function to translate the origin from the top left corner of my canvas to the middle of the canvas. And I need to provide the arguments as width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And let's give a diameter at 300, 300. Now to make a ring, we need to draw a set of circles around this circular path. To do that, we need to be able to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates to get the x and y locations of each of the circles on this path. And we can do that by using the two equations. Let x equals to r times cosine of angle and let y to be equals to r times sine of angle, where r is the distance from the center of the circle. Now let's define r and set it to 50. And I can replace this diameter 300 by r times 2 comma r times 2. And then let's start the angle at 0. I'm going to be using angle in degrees, so I also need to set the angle mode to degrees. Now that we have x and y defined, why don't we draw another ellipse at x and y coordinate and give a diameter of 10. Alright, so now we have one circle on this circular path. But we want to draw a set of circles around this whole path, right? So first, let's define the number of circles that we want to draw. How about we set it to 10? And we're going to be using a for loop to draw this set of circles. So for let i equals to 0, i less than num, which is the number of circles that we want to draw. And then I'm going to copy this whole set of code in here. First, we need to move this translate function outside of the for loop. We want to translate it once. And then we don't really need to draw this middle circles anymore. Now we need to calculate what this angle is going to be. So we can use the equation angle equals to 360, which is one revolution of a circle, right? Divided by the number of circles, which is 10. This is going to give us an angle between each of the circles on the ring, and then we want to multiply it by i. And if we click run, we get a set of circles. And now we can change the number here to whatever number of circles that we want along this path. Now that we have the set of code, why don't we put it in a class? Just come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click create file. I'm going to call this file ring.js. Before we start writing a class, let's go to index.html file and then copy this line of code. Change the name sketch to the name of the new JavaScript file that you just created, in my case, ring.js. And this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into your program. Let's go back to ring.js. First define class, name it ring. And then I want to write a total of two functions right now. So constructor function and display. And now let's go back to sketch.js. We want to define all of these variables in our class. So we have radius, we have angle, and we have num for the number of circles on this path. And I actually want to give radius and num as the parameters for my constructor function. How about we put this in front? All right. And then for display, we just need to copy this set of code, and then put it in here. All right, so this has to be this.num, this.num. And I guess we don't need this.angle here. And then this.r here, this.r here. Let's go back to sketch.js, and how about we just create one ring? I'm going to define a variable called r, and r is going to be a new ring object. And we need 
R and num, right? So R is going to be a radius of 150, and then the number, how about just 40, like what we have here. Then we want to call it by putting the name of the object dot and then the method display. If we click run, it should still look the same. And let's say we change the radius here to 100 and the number to 30. So we have a smaller ring. Before we start creating a bunch of rings, I want to also add another method called move. And to move this ring, we need to create a new variable. How about we create a variable called speed and let's set it to zero. And basically to move this ring, we just need to add this variable speed to angle here. So basically we want to change the angle inside this parentheses at a certain increment. And that increment is how about we start with one and we need to go back to sketch.js and then call this move method and then run. Let's go back here. Oh, we said it just equals to one. So that's why you saw it only moved once. We need to do plus equals. All right, and now our ring is moving in a clockwise direction. Now we want to create a set of rings. I'm going to define an array called rings and I'm going to define another variable called n to be the number of rings that I want to create. How about we start with three? I'm going to use a for loop to go through i equals to zero to i less than n, i plus plus, and then my rings array is going to be a set of new ring objects. And now we can just call this for loop inside the draw function. And then we want to call the display method and the moves method. If we click run, and we only see one ring and that is because we didn't change the arguments here yet. How about we start it at 150, so a little bit bigger, the first ring, and then subtract it by an offset. And this offset is going to be depending on which ring it is. So i, and then we multiply it by an offset of how about 10. So each of the ring is going to have a radius that is 10 less than the one outside of it. Let's try that. All right. How about we increase the number of rings to 9? Okay, but that doesn't look like a star. So what do we need to do? I'm going to start by commenting out the move function first. We need to actually vary the number of circles in each of the ring too. And to get that star pattern, I'm going to start the one that is the outermost ring at 50. And then I'm going to subtract it by i times five. So the outermost one will have 50 circles and then each inner one will have five circles fewer than the one outside of it. All right, so that looks like a star. Now we also want to vary the diameter of each of these circles in each of the rings. So let's go to ring.js and define this.d for the diameter and then give this as another parameter and instead of giving it a constant 10, now it's going to be this.d and this.d. And what is it going to be? So the outermost one, I want to set it at 6, and I want each of the rings inside of the outer ring to have an offset of i times 0 0.5. All right, and now let's change the colors. So let's make the background black, and let's give the color of the circles white. Perfect. Now we just need to move it. Move it, move it. All right, that looks pretty cool. It's moving in the clockwise direction at a constant speed. Now I'm going to show you how to use different easing functions to get a more interesting movement between each frame. An easing function is a function that represents a rate that a value is changed. And what you see from this animation 
is an easing function that is linear, meaning that a value is changed at a constant speed. If you come to this website here, easings.net, you can see that there are many other easing functions other than linear that can give you an interesting transition between frames. For example, this ease in quad equation here, it starts out slow and then it speeds up towards the end, right? Which is the opposite of ease out quad, which starts out fast and then slows down at the end. To get the different easing functions, all you have to do is click in the link here and then scroll all the way down and then you can see the set of equations. So for example, for easing quad, the equation is y equals to x squared. And I actually have put together some of these equations in an easing.js JavaScript file already, which you can check out in my code. So I'm gonna show you how you can integrate my easing.js file into your file. So you just need to come to this arrow again, create a new file, let's call it easing.js. You can copy my easing functions, which has all of the equations here, for example, easing quad, which returns x squared, right? And then don't forget to come to index.html file and then also integrate it into your program, right? So easing.js. So how would we use these functions? Right now, the speed is changing at a constant value of one, and we do it in a simple way by just adding the speed by one every time the draw loop is called. And we can actually do it in a different way using a linear interpolation equation. So if you remember, the equation is y equals to min, which is the starting point, plus the amount of interpolation times max, which is the ending point, minus min, which is the starting point. So in our case, the speed, which is y, will change from the minimum, which is zero, right? Plus the amount of interpolation, we'll come back to this, times max, which is 360. So we want to rotate it from zero to 360 minus min, which is zero. So with this, we can actually delete zero out here. So it would just be the amount of interpolation times 360. And the amount of interpolation will go between 0 and 1. For example, at the amount of interpolation of 0 0.5, we'll get a return value of 180. So basically, we want to vary this amount or increment it from 0 to 1 every time the draw loop is called. So what we need to do is, how about we first set the, this amount to 0, and then, and then we want to increment this amount from 0 to 1, so how about we increment it by 0 0.01. So as I said, the amount of interpolation will vary between 0 and 1. So we actually also want to set a conditional statement that says if this dot amt is more than 1, let's set it back to 0, else we increment it. And you can actually change the amount of interpolation to whatever you want. Actually, the max value I want to move is the angle that we calculate between each of the circles on the ring. So it's going to be 360 divided by num, or this dot num. So let's run it again. And now it just moves slower. But you don't see that it transitioned from one point to another. And that is because it's moving in a linear function. So what if we go to easing.js and let's try to use easingquad function. So how would we use this? Basically, you just need to call this equation, this function, and give it an argument of this.amt, and then click Run. Do you see that movement now? It starts out slow and then it ends a little bit fast, which is kind of abrupt. So if we were to do east in out quad, you can see that there is a smoother transition now because the east in out quad equation returns a value where it starts out slow and then it goes fast in the middle and then it ends slow as well. Play around with different easing functions to get a nice transition between each loop. And you can use the easing functions that I already have in the file, or you can find other equations, or even come up with your own. Give it a try.